Hey guys, so I'm here in my garage and today I'm going to be building some sound panels that I'm going to use for my studio. And uh, this is kind of going to be like a studio transformation, if you will. Uh, but today I'm going to show you how I built these sound panels that are going to, you know, absorb the sound in my, in my room to reduce reflections and bass traps and stuff like that. And um, so yeah, we'll get to the making of these panels. All right, so here are some of the things that I use to put these panels together and some of the prices that you can expect to be paying for these certain things. So for the sound absorbing material, I went ahead and used the rock wool safe and sound. Um, a lot of people online have been saying this is the best material to use, so that's what I used. And then I used this miter saw to get some of the cuts for the frame of the panels. Now you might not have certain tools like this and I totally understand the first project I did was with just using a saw so if it's possible for you to use these kind of tools I would totally suggest using them. And for the frame material itself I used this 4x8 particle board. I also used this 4x8 oriented strand board. Now you don't have to get this but you'll see later in the video but I used the side of it to make a straight cut with the 4x8 particle board. Now for the fabrics themselves, I use the 72 inch fabric from Joann's and I also use this 20 inch fusible interfacing for keeping the insulation sheets from falling out of the back of the panel. Here's a list of all the materials needed to make these panels. I also have a link to all the gear and materials I use down in the description. So here's the idea of using 72 inches for the fabric. With six yards, you'll effectively be able to wrap eight panels. Now for the cuts for the frame itself, you're going to need to make at least 12 3 inch cuts from the particle board. After making those cuts, you're going to want to set aside 8 strips to make 16 pieces of 3 inch by 47 inches, and then 4 strips to make 20 pieces of 3 inch by 16 and a half inches. Now if you don't have any ways to cut the particle board, you can always go to Home Depot and ask them to cut the strips for you. This is what I had to do when I tried this project out for the first time and didn't have the tools to make the cuts myself. And also note that if you go to Joann's to get your fabric, they will measure out the yards and cut it for you. And once you have all your materials and tools, it's just a matter of cleaning up your space to put together these panels. If you see this purple thing, you're just wondering what in the world is that? Um, the only table saw that I have is this one. It's a pretty good table saw, but it's not enough room for me to work with on this big sheet of uh, plywood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna lay it down all over on the floor. And what that's gonna allow me to do is grab the big sheet of plywood and then put it on top of it. That way I can uh, make the cuts that I need to without damaging the floor and making sure everything is nice and flat. So this is in two pieces. Basically, this is um, some insulation stuff that builders use to put in their walls and stuff like that. The reason why it's in two pieces is because it can't fit in my little car. So I had to cut it in half. That way it would uh, fit in my car a long ways. And it doesn't matter that the saw is going to go through this because this is fairly cheap and you can use this for a lot of cuts uh, a lot of times. So it's a really good way to combat not having a, a proper table for cutting big sheets of wood. Here's that strand board that I was talking about earlier. Basically what I'm going to do is just cut off a piece so I can have that green line as a straight edge for when I'm cutting the three inch strips off the particle board. Basically to make a, a relatively straight line on this piece, with my speed square, there is a lip basically on the, on the square that will allow you to put uh, that lip on the edge of wood. What I did was I just lined it up against the straight edge and then I got my pin and put it right into this little diamond and kept it right at the tip of it. And then I just ran it along like that with the pin inside this diamond and it just makes a straight line as you go. I also want to do a little disclaimer here that I am nowhere near a actual woodworker so everything I'm doing is just based on what I learned and what I have. So if any of you woodworkers have a problem with what I'm doing, I am totally sorry. Uh, I'm just doing everything based on what I know. So what I got to do now that I got the straight edge, to make sure that I have my line really straight using the straight edge, I have to of course, make sure that I compensate the distance between the edge right here of the circular sole and the blade itself. 
and make sure, you know, because I'm going to have to go along this line and um, using the straight edge, I obviously can't just put the straight edge right on that line because there's some space that needs to compensate for the blade and then the edge of this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a screw and just screw it in here to secure it. If that way it doesn't slide around or anything like that. I don't really care for holes being in here because this is just the frame. It's going to be cut up anyways, so you can't really see that once the fabric's all over it. So let's do it. You also may notice that I'm putting a screw in the middle of the straight edge that I cut off. When I was trying it with just two screws on the top and other end of the straight edge, it was sliding around. So making a screw in the middle of it was making it more secure and making it not slide whenever I came to that area with using the circular saw. Now that I have the 12 strips that I need to make the frames, I'm going to cut them to make the sides and the tops of the frames. All right, the next step here is to make 47 inch cuts and also 16 and a half cuts. And how I'm gonna do that here is on the miter saw. And if you could see, I have a special rig that I got going on. So a little tip to make sure that every single cut that you do is gonna be accurate and gonna be the same every time. So every piece you have is gonna be exactly the same length. So basically what I did here is I set up a really long, it was that remainder board that I had. Basically just gave it some little feet so it can sit flush. And I just me I measured the distance between the miter saw's uh, base and then, you know, to the floor. So I just measured one leg to be this certain length and then the other remainder would be from the particle board. So basically now it just lays all flat. So what's gonna happen is when I put the piece of wood that I'm gonna cut down onto the miter saw, what's gonna happen is it's gonna push all the way to the end of this stop block and it's going to stop it and basically what that allows it to do is to you know have the blade hit right on the line every time so this is going to be 47 inches every time whenever i do 16 inches i'm going to have to get this stop block and then move it down to probably somewhere around here just so whenever i put the wood into it it'll stop right there and it'll be 16 and a half inches every time. You don't have to make a special rig like this. This is just something I did that I know is gonna help make precise cuts every time and it also saves me time. That way I don't have to measure out every single cut I make. And then once you have all your pieces for the frames, it's time to put them together. And you're gonna put the pieces together in this configuration where the top and bottom sit on top of the side pieces. And then when you're actually putting them together, you're gonna to want to make sure that you drill pilot holes first. That way you don't strip the particle board when putting the nails through it. I use the corner clamp to hold the pieces together. Uh, this one just helped to make sure the pieces don't move around whenever I'm drilling in the holes. You don't have to use something like this, but it definitely helps just to make sure nothing slides around while you're drilling holes. And of course I'm using three different drills. This is a bit overkill, but it just makes it faster for me to do it this way without having to swap out the different bits.
And after putting all the frames together, you have a frame that looks like this. All right, and after we have all the frames done, the next step that I did was put on the fusible interfacing. And this is just so that the insulation doesn't fall out from the back whenever you have the panels put together. Next step would be putting in the insulation sheets of rock wool and I'm just putting on gloves and a mask uh, just to make sure that this stuff is very fine particle stuff so this is just good practice to keep yourself safe. And then after you put the insulation in, you're just going to want to lay your fabric out and then turn over the panel with the insulation in and then just start cutting out your fabric to wrap the panels up. Whenever you are wrapping the panel, just make sure you are tugging the fabric so that way no creases or wrinkles are in the fabric and it just it gives it a nice look on the other side of the panel. So when I was wrapping the panel with the black fabric, I didn't really get a good shot of the corner wrap. So doing this specific technique that I'm doing here will give you a good way of wrapping the corners and making it have like a good look to it. Just make sure that you're always tugging on the fabric just to make sure everything's nice and snug and no wrinkles are being made. Um, that's going to ultimately give you a nice, smooth, clean, flush look whenever the panels are all put together. And then when everything is nice and wrapped and all the excess fabric is cut off, you end up with this. Now putting these panels on the wall, I made these little brackets to secure to the panel and the wall itself. This was just the fastest solution that I can think of and was the cheapest as well. Basically all it is is a two by one piece of wood that I got and um, cut it down using the miter saw. I just turned the degree to 45 angles. I made an angle cut and then I made a straight cut and you can see here in the video that I actually was flipping it so that way every time I made a cut the pieces were opposite of each other. And then after making all these bracket cuts, I just primed them by making pilot holes. Again, the pilot holes just ensure that whenever you put the screw through it, the wood doesn't crack. And when I make all the pilot holes for the brackets, I just lay down the panel by putting two slats of 
extra wood that I have so that way the panel doesn't touch the ground and get dirty from the fabric on the floor. Um, and then all I need to do is just decide where I'm going to put the brackets on the panel, measure it out, make mark my marks, and then drill the holes into the panel itself. That way I can screw in the bracket to the panel. I just partially put the screw through the bracket that way I can screw it onto the panel itself before actually putting it through the hole. This just helps to align the hole with the screw and then be able to drill it in easier. This little piece is just an extra little square. This is gonna be a stopper for the bottom of the panel. And this is just ensuring that there's gonna be space between the panel and the wall. After I had all the brackets put in place, I just kind of guesstimated where I was going to put the bracket on the wall and then just marked it with a pencil to uh, ensure where I was going to have those wall anchors on the wall. And then I used the leveler to make sure that the line is straight as well, making sure that nothing is crooked whenever putting the panel to the wall. From that line, I just measured where the bottom of the bracket was compared to the top of the bracket on the panel so that way everything is lined up correctly when making the holes for the wall. And then I measured where the brackets were on the panel itself and then translated that onto the wall for the wall anchors. And just like before, I am partially putting the screw through the bracket. That way I can secure it to the wall manually without having to guess where the hole is when putting the screw through it. Now, whenever using the drill to screw the screw into the wall, I would suggest just going a little bit to where it gets start to get tight and then manually actually turn the bracket itself, making it more tighter to the wall. If you go too deep in using the drill, you might risk breaking the wall and the bracket. <laughs> And then just like that, you have a bracket system that attaches to the wall with the panel. Next thing I wanna show you is how I actually secured the panel to the ceiling. The first thing I did is got these hook eyes and then secured them to the corners of the panel. A little tip that I learned is that you want to make sure that the thread of the screw you're using is a little bit bigger than the drill bit you're using to make your pilot holes with. This will ensure that the thread of the screw will have enough wood for the threads to hold onto whenever you're putting the screw into the pilot hole you made. The next thing I did is just measure where the eye hooks were on the panel and then translated that to the ceiling for wherever I wanted to put the panel. Now finding the perfect spot on the ceiling was a little bit difficult because you were working upside down essentially so I didn't get my lines too straight but if you know of a better way to make sure everything is straight I would definitely advise doing it that way. <laughs> 
I also use some painter drop cloth plastic just to cover my studio desk. That way whenever I'm drilling the holes, none of that dust falls onto my computer or anything like that. And then after I make all the holes, I am going to secure the wall anchors into those holes. Next step was putting the rope through the eye screws and getting a good measurement for how I want the panel to hang on the ceiling. I just basically did a double knot to the eye screw and just made sure I pulled really tight so it doesn't come undone whenever it's on the ceiling. And then for the measurement itself, I actually wanted the panels to slant. So what I did was did one side where I did three inches and then on the other side, I think I did about 16 inches and that made a nice little slant on the ceiling whenever everything was secure. Bringing the entire panel to the ceiling is a difficult task when you're doing it by yourself. So if you have anyone to help you doing this process, I would suggest doing that. Um, but I was able to do it by myself. So if you are handy and you can figure out doing it by yourself, more than welcome to do it. But again, I would advise someone helping you do this. That way you're not risking falling or, or anything breaking or anything like that. And when you have everything secured, you have a panel that is nice and slanted. Not too bad. And after securing all the panels to the wall and ceiling in my studio, I did some cool things to make my studio look even cooler by adding some RGB lights. So without further ado, this is the end result. Quick question. Do you have a business or would like to have a presence for your audience? Have you heard of podcasts? <laughs> Show up for your audience with a podcast and build a relationship with your consumers. And being the podcast doctor that I am, I have the best way for doing just that, especially in these podcast trending times. I'm building a course called the Dr. Podcast PhD that will go over the very reason why your business needs a podcast and all the secret sauces of building a successful one. This course comes with many benefits and resources especially within a community of its students, and is something you won't want to miss out on. I highly encourage you to sign up for the PhD and be notified of its release. You can do so by clicking the link below or visiting drpodcast.com and signing up for the newsletter. Do something great, do something impactful, and do it today. I'll see you guys in the next video.